everybody? I'm Nick at the phone, and it is the first day of the SEMA show 2023, and we're in Las Vegas, Nevada, or the, at the Las Vegas Convention Center, and as you can see, behind me is kind of like the main, main entrance, but behind the camera, David, behind you, there's a bunch of people walking in, getting ready to see this exciting show, so let's go check out some cool cars. We're gonna be covering Central Hall today, and uh, <laughs> And hopefully you guys see it. So share this video. If you see your car, comment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, again, please share this video, especially if you want to keep seeing coverage. We're going to be covering the entire week, every day, uploading a full recap of whatever hall that we're going to. So first up, the world's famous Central Hall. Walking up right away, you see the pit paddock booth, and they got something really covered up right there. I'm pretty excited to see what's behind that. But even though there are cars that are not covered for a reveal. Their lineup is just sick. And their display, honestly, their themes have always been really, really cool. The name of their company is Pip Haddock. So, as you can see, it literally looks like they're staged up. Ah, yeah, look at that. You can kind of tell what it is. Kind of already says what it is down there. It's a Lamborghini Diablo GT. So, can't wait to see that. We'll come back and get that. But this is just... This is what SEMA show is all about, right? You you walk in and right when you walk in, you see a bunch of cars. There's Big Mike right there. Hi, how are you? What's up, man? So we're, we're feeling good to see you. We're filming for the photo right now. Yeah. So did you bring anything? What's going on? No, no, I'm doing uh, I'm doing media with SEMA. So oh, okay. To, to help kind of bridge the gap for Battle of the Builders. You know, we still want to make sure that people in our world and, and subcultures understand that that is something to aspire to and to uh, to build to compete in. It isn't unattainable, you know. So I get to work with Sima to, to help dispel that and to share just organically share the content that I like with the followers, you know. Right. So and man, you built some nice cars though. So I appreciate you, man. Thank is that kind of hard to like transition into that and not bring in a car? Or? Uh, for the competitor and the automotive enthusiast designer in me, sure, it's a little bit difficult. But at the same time, if you're going to accept the responsibility to work with some people, you got to, you know, dedicate yourself to that and not be uh, too thinned out. And, and so I'm fine, man. I mean, I've got some cars in the works, yeah. so maybe next year or whatever. But right now, it's all about. Get, I get to. I'm blessed to get to organically share what I look at, what I like, with the world, uh, and do it with SEMA. So it's dope. Man. Very cool, man. So look forward to seeing more and uh if you guys don't know be sure to follow big mike on all social media platforms and check out his prelude too that thing is insane i appreciate you man this thing is definitely getting everybody to take a look at it it's fully custom so it's definitely something way different because it's a nissan 350z with two honda engines k-series and man this thing is insane so it's obviously all-wheel drive now at this point, but it's definitely a showstopper getting a lot of attention. You probably have already seen it online as well, but this thing is just remarkable. So one of the first stops that we are doing in Central Hall that really caught our eye is Hypercraft because, well, it's EV, right? Yes, it is. So go All ahead and introduce yourself and let us know what this is because this is definitely the future and it seems to me like a lot of builds are starting to happen with EV. Yeah, it, it is. So first off, thank you. Um, I'm Kirk Miller, one of the vice presidents here at Hypercraft. And uh, what you have behind me is a 1956 Corvette. It's an Art Morrison chassis being built by Scared Shiftless. Now, an important note here is we don't do conversions. We actually support the builders. So uh, we don't have to worry about, you know, how are we gonna build or what platform are we gonna build? We just actually just produce the parts for the builder. So really important side note. Yeah. And over the years of us supporting uh, with packages, we realized that one of the big one of the biggest challenges for the builders is not the fitting of the product, but actually sourcing all the components they work in harmony. So we came up with a way, a four-step journey for the customer, sort of walk through, starting with, we can walk through this journey if you want, but starting with power, like how much power do you want? What do you want to do with oh, yeah. it? Oh, let's play, let's play this game. All right, so obviously I love drag racing and right. just big powered cars. So I think for EV, let's say it feels on the street, I, I'd want something like 500 horsepower. No problem. So what can we do? So here, now there's, that's a, that's a 
great question. What can we do? And I'll show you. But really important to note is that because an EV has basically 100% torque at like 2 RPM, your power under the curve is massive. So what you can typically do with an internal combustion engine of 500 horsepower, you can do with 350 horsepower on an EV. So you going 500 on an EV, that's gonna be a really fun, fast car. And that's something that's kind of different. It's gonna take some time, especially for all of you who have been drag racing, it's gonna take time to adapt with the whole no more sound, right? No more V8, just raw power, listening. But it doesn't mean, what's the one goal we all want? We all want to go fast. To be the fastest of all time, you're gonna do what it takes to get there, even if it means being quiet. That's right. Well, you know, there's different sounds. You have gear winds and things that, that yeah. come out of it, but you're right. You know, the sound, missing the sound is a tremendous loss because you know, that's somewhat visceral and it's, it's you, you hear it from a distance. So that's really cool. The other side of it is you hear it from a distance. No, exactly. So racetracks <laughs> yeah. are getting clamped down on because right. of sound. So that's that's a problem. But when, when what we focus on is performance. So if I said, hey, what's the fastest car out there? It's a hypercar. It's a hybrid or it's all EV. That's the fastest stuff on the planet right now and the quickest stuff. So EV is just a way to improve the performance overall. Exactly. So let's let's go through a journey. Follow us, David. You keep recording. And uh, we already picked the power. So now. It's like Legos. And to, to be completely honest, I am 100% pretty new on a lot of the EV stuff. Uh, the most I've done is just drive a Tesla. <laughs> so that, that's that's actually an important note. Like, what do you have to know? Right. And at the highest level, like, like we've got these four stations. How much power do you want? What kind of range? Now, you can get into it. You can talk about hairpin windings, round pin windings, axial flux, radial flux. There's all sorts of different motors. But we've done all that work for you. So what we're trying to do ultimately is allow you to build the car and enjoy the car. So we engineer the complexity out and then just get you faster, you know, down the road faster. Yeah. So we have motor packages. The, the inverter itself takes the DC voltage from the battery pack, turns it to AC. So that's what we're doing. It's also really kind of your throttle gate. And it's also looking at a lot of other information. But again, we're trying to engineer out that, all that out of the equation. So you don't have to worry about all that complexity. Nice. Yeah. You get a dash that says, you know, how much current you drive, what's your state of charge, what they call SOC for your battery. Okay. Is it half full, is it full full? You can see all that information, then your temps and, and such. Okay, so let's say, obviously we're going with a 500 horsepower range, but what if later down the road, like always, I want more? Is that, do I have to completely change the system out or is that something just electronically that we could kind of wrap so in? So that, that's a great question. So if you are planning to go more, I would say start more. Yeah. And then what we can do is we can derate or detune it. So, okay. so let's say the chassis or the tire or your class, whatever it might be, can't handle that, you can derate it. So try to start with the end in mind I and see. then back out. But it, unlike, you know, an ICE with turbos and injectors and stage injectors and all these other controls, you don't have to go through all those control changes. So you could start with the big package and then detune it and run it like that. And once you get to the point where you want more, it's literally just sending another cow and bringing it up. Nice. All right. So let's go to step two. All what right, would step be two. next? Step two is, is, is range. So how far do you want to go? And then also, to your point, you want to drag race. Right. So we have these are hyper packs and these are designed to be modular battery packs. And they vary in size, but more importantly, they vary in chemistry. There's two chemistries, energy, and that's for your cruising and hot rodding and having fun and you know, just heavy load, but not drag racing. Drag right. racing, you're saying, man, I need it all and I need it in eight or nine seconds. So now you need a power cell. So that's a different energy, energy chem chemistry in the cell itself. We use all 21700 cells, so it's all cylindrical. And then we have different collector plates and bus bars to accommodate the increasing current. So think of this as sort of like you have a fuel pump and fuel lines and injectors, you have to all be sized to get the energy or the right. fuel right. You know, to the inverter and to the motor drive system. I see. And then on to charging. So there's two primary components and two questions here. So one is how fast do you want to charge? So most people know they call it fast charge, or super charge, or CCS, oh, right, right. and then level two. Level two is your, your, your part, plug it in, overnight it's charged up. Now a weekend warrior, that's cool. You're a drag racer. You need this to be topped up oh, yeah. right after every <laughs> run. So how are we gonna do that? Something called CCS, so that's fast charge. 
so that you can charge up your pack and top it off after every pass. So you're right, make sure you have 100% capacity. You don't have to worry about battery sag or anything like that. It's all dialed into the system. Again, this is all food program yeah. in. So you don't have to worry about thinking like, oh, you know, there's no dials How do to we figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing to do but plug it in, wait till the, the dash lights up and says I'm full, then you go take it out. The most important thing here is safety, because you deal with high voltage and direct drive systems. So you can't throw it in neutral if something goes wrong. And then with the high voltage, it's just dangerous. Right. You know, so, like I said, 400 to 800 volts. It doesn't take a whole lot of voltage. It's like over 60 some volts and it can really do some damage. So high voltage and safety go hand in hand. So with our high voltage junction box, we have, we have current sensors, we have contactors in there that are rated properly. There's also, something called, referred to as an IMD, Isolation Monitoring Device. And what that is, in simplest terms, is a continuity tester between the high voltage and the low voltage in your 12 volt circuit, and the high voltage in the chassis. So if there's any open or leaks of high voltage, this will sound, not sound alarm, it'll send a signal up to your display and to your VCU saying, hey, we have a, a high voltage breach. Oh, okay. Something's wrong. And you can get a warning light, you can get a D-rate, you can open the contactors, which isolates the battery pack from the chassis. So all that goes on inside here. So nice. this is a really critical component. In addition to that, it has high voltage accessory ports. Our next table is options. If you want AC, power steering, you know, oh, heaters, you like go. all those things. They're seat all high warmers. Voltage. See? Absolutely. Seat warmer, that's, that's my thing. And your right? drag car. <laughs> yeah. We're on our way to the final stages of a complete system of your drag car. So here it's, it's kind of, it's kind of basic, but again, in, in the idea of supporting the builders and packaging things to make the decisions easier, and having things that are already pre-programmed into our system, like in a wizard. Right. So you have accelerators, you have a drop-down box for torque reduction, or torque, torque multiplication, RPM reduction. So if you have an inline motor, not like you saw with the transverse, those motors spin a very high RPM, 12,000. You can't just hook that up to a transmission because your top end will be too high and your, even your input bearing speeds will have problems. So this you can step down to it'll match what the ICE engine is, so maybe it's 8,000 RPM. That can step down the output to 8,000 RPM. So then you have a way to drive your diff and everything else at a reasonable speed. Nice. In addition to that, high voltage accessories include, this is a high voltage power steering. Now this is an extreme right here because this is used in the King of the Hammers build that we oh, do. Oh, very cool. So there's a yeah. spec series that's being developed there. They all use RAM steering, hydraulic steering. That's the package that we use. That's an 800 volt power steering pump. Yeah. And hydraulic. for those of you who are not familiar with King of the Hammers, that is rock crawling, like big boulders, you know, not just little pebbles on the side of the beach or something. These things are climbing mountains. So it's, yeah, it's, that that's definitely needs to be beefy, strong, reliable. And, uh, well, that's that's kind of cool because we do such a big focus of motorsport with hypercraft. So the king of the hammers is like I don't know a more severe form of motorsport because, like you said, it's rock crawling, but it's also desert racing. Yeah. And then it's sort of like Mad Max, yeah. you know, meets organized <laughs> racing. So right, it's, right. It's, it's a really harsh environment. So that's that's a great solution. Very right. right. So that this is your your final step. You select yeah, your dash, and then you're and we're on our way to putting it into a chassis and then going out and having fun. That's right. Well, thank you very much for taking thank the time. This is a you, very man. cool experience. Love seeing the innovation and just seeing what the future has to hold for us, really. It's so. happening right now, man. <laughs> exactly. Right now. So let's keep going. We got Central Hall, a lot of ground to cover, and see what else we can find. All right, so we're in the Elite Tuner booth, and right here, we ran into him. Go ahead and introduce yourself and let everybody know the man behind the brand. All right, so this is Ranger from Elite Tuner. Uh, we've been here since 20, 2014. Uh, we've been doing car shows across the whole nation, and uh, we just saw first time uh, exhibiting here in SEMA, and we're excited to share this with everybody. All right, so before we get started on what Elite Tuner is, go ahead and tell us what is behind you and what is displayed? So right here we have my 2023 <laughs> FL5. I built it from the ground up. I got down pipes. I got basically all the bolt-ons. Got a carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber fenders. You know everything you could probably get for this car right now. Um, I'm a, I'm excited about the platform. Not a lot of people have it, and I was able to do something like this with. It. All right, so what is Elite Tuner and what do you guys do for the community? So we host a whole bunch of car shows throughout the whole nation. Um, we do like events and motorsports events like uh, drag racing, motorsports, um, and then obviously the car show portion of it where we have stages and all that good stuff. Now, is, uh, how many events do you guys typically do throughout the year? 
about 16 or 20 events throughout the year. We do it throughout the whole entire country, oh, okay. including Puerto Rico. Oh, and in Puerto Rico. And in Puerto okay, Rico, there yes. You go. So, what's something that you could probably share, if you can, for next year that's maybe like a big surprise that's going to be coming or you're doing something different? Yeah, so next year, we're thinking of going to Seattle. Oh, nice. And then the following year, we're thinking of actually going to Hawaii and then Japan. Oh, and Japan. And Japan. Oh, well, that's going to be very cool. Yeah, I'm excited for that. So, you guys heard it first. He's giving you a little heads up of what the future holds, but uh, honestly, we appreciate you guys using our service. Awesome. And if you guys don't know, you can get your tickets on the phone for Elite Tuner. And there's a bunch of information about their events. And also follow them on social media platforms. Yeah, 100%. That way uh, you can see when the next event is near you. That way you can take your car, take your family, your friends. Oh, yeah. Anything else you want to add? Just want to add, if you guys out there trying to do events, man, uh, make sure you guys use the phone because they are actually probably the number one in the industry with the ticketing services that they provide. Very good customer service and they're actually very, very amazing. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate thank it. You. We'll uh, see you later. See you at your event, and uh, you. we're gonna keep capturing Sima. Okay, this is the tip foods section. And as you can see, there's a huge line for everybody to meet him and follow you out of it. Right over there, it seems like. I wonder if some cars in there. Oh, look. Got forward. So clearly, this thing isn't just for show. All right, we stumbled upon a Race Wars booth, and here he is. How are you doing today? What's up, guys? How's everything going? Good to see you. Good to see you. Let, go ahead and just introduce yourself to everybody and let everybody know what Race Wars is all about. Well, my name is Jeff Maldonado uh, from Los, Los Angeles. Race Wars is actually our, our event that we do at a national level that's actually owned by 742 Marketing. So this is our production event. Uh, the name Race Wars came, if you guys know Fast and Furious 1, uh, that one scene at the airport, uh, that whole thing was called Race Wars and we took that concept and made it an actual event. Uh, so we do drag racing, we do drifting now, we do time attack, uh, we do car shows, you know, burnout contests all over the U.S. Uh, and yeah, that's, I mean, the name Race Wars, we own the trademark now, so this is the reason why we're here at CMA this year is to kind of launch the name officially as a trademark, you know, we're doing licensing and all that stuff, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much the nutshell of it. So, okay, so there's multiple brands. Yes. Under, under different events? Yeah, so we so our main company is 742 Marketing. Within that, we have Race Wars USA, we have Just Vibes, and then we collaborate events with Global Time Attack and Super Lab Battle throughout the US and Just Vibes. Yeah, so that's very cool. And if you guys didn't know, we also use the folks for their ticketing. So you yes. could go online, go to the folks, go to their ticket page, and get your tickets in advance. And there's a lot more info there, or you can just follow them on social media. Yeah, we've been using the folks for a couple of years now. Super happy. We highly recommend it to everybody that's coming down to the promoter side and doing events. Go to the folks. Very easy to do. Very easy to work with. The team is amazing. So yeah, that's that's the the folks the one to go with. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. So we're gonna check out these amazing cars you got going on here. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about both of them? I, I give you a brief description because they're not my cars, but yeah. I know. This is, uh, if anybody knows who Amir is from uh, Super Street Garage, he's the co-host of the show in um, Motor Trend. This is his NSX, which is uh, the world record holder for his class at the Super Lab Battle at Austin Track. He's one of the fastest cars out there. It's a full carbon fiber NSX. That's all I know. I know you can also move it with two fingers because it's super light. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have this 1934 Ford Coupe. It's a hard rod style. Pretty much what we're trying to represent is we, we do import and domestic. We go from full race to full hot rods because that's what we cater to in all of our shows. We don't discriminate against any genre or any style of car. So we're open to all makes and models. This is the representation of it right here. There you go. Very cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And we'll Thank see you at the next event. Great. All right, so go ahead and just introduce yourself and let everybody know what Supertech is and all about. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Martin Tagavini. I'm here at Supertech. I'm one of the chief marketing officers at Supertech. Uh, basically, we are a valve train company. We are a valve manufacturer. 
Uh, and after, the, after a few years, we started manufacturing springs, spring kits, uh, pistons, connecting rods, and now also head gaskets. So we have a complete uh, range of products for most applications. So what can you say about the car that's in your guys' booth? Yeah, so that's uh, our race car that we race uh, uh, from the office. Uh, it races with NASA and Super Touring 4, uh, as well as SCCA ITE. It's a BMW E30, I'm sorry, E46 M3, and it has a S54 engine with all our complete head package, pistons, and rods as well. So what are some of the big differences with the valves? So obviously there's right. different materials, right? What, what would you say Correct. is a good time to get like an e-canal valve versus a... Right, so obviously primarily valve is used, uh, we have intake valves and exhaust valves. Intakes usually are gonna, all gonna be uh, stainless steel uh, with our black nitride coating. Uh, now when you start going turbo applications, you need to use an ink canal. Ink canal is a high temperature alloy. It allows the valve to run a lot harder without warping. Uh, now, with the new introduction of small uh, displacement engines, uh, you need to use a sodium-filled Inconel valve, which allows you even more horsepower, more temperature, and keeping that valve from warping. As well as uh, another application would be titanium. Those are usually used in engines that need to be revving above 10,000 RPMs, and they want to have the valve train as light as possible. Very cool. So there's definitely a lot to learn when it comes yeah, to the absolutely. internals. Yeah. But if you guys want to learn more, let everybody know where they can follow you guys yeah. on obviously websites. Yeah, please, uh, you can follow us at uh, supertechperformance.com or you can send us an email at info at supertechperformance.com. AMS booth, these guys built some fast, fast cars. And uh, they also got a lot of packages that they always offer. So if you're into racing, we definitely have something for you. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. All right. So I have no experience in welding. Zero. Zero. You're how, our favorite customer. How difficult or easy yeah. is it is to get into welding? Uh, well, to get into welding, it's. I first I would ask myself, what do I want to do with it? Right? Am I repairing cars? Am I just want to work on some? some fun projects, hobbies, things like that. Because really it's going to kind of determine if you want something like a, a easy MIG welder or do you want to get into precision TIG welding. So those are kind of the first thing I would ask myself. The second thing I would ask myself is what power do I have in my garage or shop or what I'm going to be using? Now, do I only have 120 power? Uh, some of our machines run on just 120 volt power. Some run on both, 120 and 240. But for a beginner, the key is ease of use, right? I want to be able to get the machine set to the parameters to weld so that I can work on technique. Because if I can't set the machine, I'm never going to learn technique because the machine's not going to give you a repeatable weld at that point. So a machine that has a function called auto set, in our, in our machines, we call it auto set. And basically, all you have to do is tell the machine the thickness of the material you're welding. It'll set itself. So you know at that point the machine is giving you this window that you can weld in, and you're not gonna get outside of that parameter range. So now you can start working on your technique. And that way, usually the people who wanna get into welding, they don't get disenchanted right away because they're not getting it, they're not putting down a weld bead, and they can't analyze what they're doing wrong. But if you already know that the machine is set properly, that's half the battle. And it's, outside of that, it's literally, you, you can watch videos, the bad thing about videos is there's no immediate feedback. You've got to kind of help, help yourself. Um, if you can get anybody that can do any video conferencing with you, I, you wouldn't believe how many people I have FaceTimed and taught them how to weld. Just because I could see the angle of their hand. They can't see what they're doing when the hood's down. Like the angle of their torch might be like this. And they can't see that. They're just looking at the arc. And the reason they're laying it down like that is because they're sitting right behind where they're welding. So. You have to move your head so you can see the torch needs to be more perpendicular to the weld. That means you have to be looking at it this way. If you're sitting behind what you're welding, you're not gonna see the welding arc. So the welding, seeing the welding arc is the key. You wanna watch the puddle. It's puddle control, really. If you're going too fast, the puddle's not gonna get time to fuse into the piece. So managing the weld puddle is that other key piece that I would say is, uh, 
is important when learning how to weld. So it's not difficult. Again, over half the problem is setting your machine. So getting a machine that does that for you, <laughs> you're already a step up from the other guy. Hey, so I'm Bill Tishner, uh, Corporate Director of Marketing for Holly. You're in our SEMA booth, uh, 2023. We're, just, we, we, we're here to show everybody what's new at Holly. We're, there's 70 brands that make up the, the Holly family. Uh, even even one of some of our brands build cars even. So our Detroit Speed Shop, uh, they, they build custom cars. This is Kevin Hart's car behind me. Just finished it and debuted it. We got products from uh, many, many of our brands here. Uh, we're, we're really showing off our Sniper 2 fuel injection ecosystem and how easy it is to use nowadays. Um, even easier than before and it was always very easy. So, And then uh, we got products from uh, our new ADS shop company, Edge Tuners, uh, Dynan, APR for the Euro guys. We have an EV booth here, our AEM EV company oh, brand. Nice. Yeah. They're down in the uh, Future Tech section. Okay. And uh, Legacy EV was actually doing a swap of an EV engine into a 32 Ford today oh, <laughs> with wow. our AEM controllers. And so a lot of cool stuff going on here at the SEMA show. And uh, yeah, we're just here to interact with our uh, network resellers and customers and uh, so much new for the year. Yeah, so if, for those that aren't familiar, you guys also have an event. And yeah. it is a huge event. Let everybody know what the name of that event is and kind of what made that happen. Oh, so uh, you're referring, well, we have several events, but you're referring to LS Fest. That's kind of the grandfather of all of our events. And uh, that was really a way 13 years ago that we wanted to uh, break into the LS engine market and show those guys our new fuel injection, LS intake manifold, oil pans to help you swap that LS engine into other early hot rods. And uh, we just kind of figured we couldn't really break through as the Holly. The, the carburetor guys and show them how much we, we understood the LS market without just doing an event for those those users and those uh, hot rodders and really got to know them one on one. They got to know what we were about and and they uh, we got to show them our stuff firsthand. And the, what started out as uh, you know a small group of guys 14 years ago now there's three LS fests around the country, LS Fest West here in Las Vegas, uh, LS Fest Texas and Dallas Fort Worth. And then the original LS Fest will be his 14th, 15th year this coming up, 2024, in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And so, man, people really, is, it's almost, uh, it's a crazy kind of a cult thing, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, people love it. We love showing them a good time. And uh, it's kind of kind of incredible. So, but the, the folk, you know, helps us get all of our ticketing done for, for all of our events, LS Fest, uh, Mo Party, and Ford Festival and uh yeah super seamless system so uh glad to use the boat yeah thank you guys very much and hope you guys enjoy your show it's a great booth and if you guys want to learn more about holly and all the other brands work at the holly.com there it is so thank you guys for all watching. right we're gonna keep See you guys later <laughs>still in central hall and we came across a very large booth with several cars but go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody if they don't know who you are my name is chris harris and i am the president of the african-american automotive association some of you may also know me as the race director from all the trc racing events you may also know me from u.s drift circuit events in our formula drift program series um, some other events and things that I do around the country and I always rock with the folk been with these guys for so long and man it's always love with these guys so what's something new for this year at the SEMA show man we just really we were back in the dungeon last year and uh, we were able to get this now premium spot and we have our own stage here so we're having interviews with big names in the automotive industry we talked to KJ Jones the senior editor at Hot Rod Magazine talked to AJ Ware he runs Richard Petty Enterprise so we're really able to tell the stories of these individuals in the automotive industry and share it with the world very cool so if we want to learn more about this where can we go to see that all right you could go to www.aaa 
SSOC.com. You can also find us on Facebook, African American Automotive Association, as well as Instagram. And if you're looking for tickets for the events, well, you can head over to the folk. <laughs> that's it, the folk. That's who we use. Anything that we do, the folk. We're doing something at PRI that has nothing to do with racing. But guess what? The tickets got to be got on the folk. <laughs> Alright, so being at SEMA in Central Hall, we had to stop at the Turbo Smart booth. But this is Marty, everybody, but I'm gonna let him introduce himself and everything you guys got going on, especially the big news that you guys just debuted this year, today. Today, this morning. So I'm Marty, I run Turbo Smart USA. I'm part of a global organization of awesome, passionate people that are dedicated to performance and especially boosted performance. And I'm super proud and excited to announce that we have now launched our own line of turbochargers. They were unveiled this morning here at SEMA. It's been a passion project of ours for many years and we've kind of sat back and looked at the market, listened to the market, and, and decided, you know, now was the time to do it, and um, here they are. Yep, and it's a pretty good lineup to start off with, that's for sure. Yeah, we, we, we really looked at, um, you know, the sweet spot in the market where, the, where a lot of demand is, volume, obviously, it's a business decision. Um, so we have everything from, you know, your Honda four-cylinder guys, you know, more on the higher end performance, yep. and all the way up to, you know, twin turbo LS's, this and that. So we're our launch range is from 52 millimeter to 7880s. So oh man, those are massive. 450 <laughs> horsepower to 1500 horsepower. Yeah. In in single configurations, um, we have two different versions of mirror image as well. So 6262 and 6466 in mirror image, which are very popular in the Lambos, the R8s. Yeah. Um, Anything twin turbo really at that point. Yeah, and and they're, they're bad boys. Um, and our, our turbocharger range, what we're doing is, it's, it fits right in with our philosophy. We're motorsports people, we're enthusiasts. All of our products, our boost control products that everyone knows us for, are smaller, they're lighter, they flow more, because we get it, it's important, right? Trying to fit the stuff in. Our turbochargers are exactly the same. They're lighter weight, they're smaller packaging, so they, they, they fit in a little bit better than the, the, the competitor's product. You can take a few pounds of weight out of the vehicle just by having our turbos in there, but they're also gonna flow tremendously. The transient response is industry leading. Um, we're gonna make that boost sooner in the RPM range, so you're gonna bring your power in sooner. Nice. Right? So you're gonna have great response without sacrificing the all-out power. Yeah. So we've kind of ticked all those boxes. They're all ball bearing. We have water-cooled and oil-cooled versions, um, and it's expanding as well. We also have internally actuated, Gates. Which is huge for the New York cars. Correct. Um, so yeah, we're, we're extremely excited and proud um, to be launching these here at SEMA this year. And Turbo Smart is definitely for the enthusiasts. And you guys race a lot too. I mean, huh. let's not let's not forget this truck that's in display has been to several drag strips, and uh, you might have seen it because at the March meet, and that's almost what we every year. It. And yeah. uh, it's definitely way different now than what it was the last couple times I've seen it. Yeah, 540 inch big block. We've been racing at March meets, NHRA, a lot of your nostalgia type events. We've been, it's a family owned truck. We've been racing this thing for 25 years and now it's boosted. Oh, so, man. <laughs> yeah, spent the last four weeks working our tails off in the shop, in my garage actually. Oh, okay. Fabricating a complete turbo system, getting, getting it all done and get, getting it ready to bring it out here to SEMA. So not only are we unveiling our turbos, you know, on the bench, we're unveiling them on a vehicle that actually runs, like, yeah. on our vehicle. You know, we have them on our internal develop, you know, but those are, you know, behind the scenes kind of vehicles. Right, right. This is out there, you know, I drive this thing. Putting in the work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and you are the driver for this thing. now. Yeah, I've been driving it for years. I've been driving it for years. You know, old man's been getting a little older, and he's my number one cheerleader, and, <laughs> you know, I've been driving it, and, um, It'll be more of like a drag and drive thing. I want yep. to keep it oh, on the nice. street. It's registered. It's insured. Um, legal, legal. Very good. Very um, good. But also it'll rip off a nine-second quarter-mile pass. That's crazy. In a truck, guys. In a truck. In a 4,200-pound 
it's all steel truck. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, it's steel. not it's it's not a not plastic, not fiberglass. No, <laughs> no, it's not a tube chassis, it's not a you know a typical SEMA show car. It's a real car um, that we brought out and the response has been great. I'm actually really surprised. I'm kind of I'm a bit shy about it. It's like, man, this, she's got some racetrack rash, you know. She's yeah. she's been through the ringer for many, many years. This is you know, the paint the same paint's been on it the whole time we've owned it. Right. And uh, you know, you look around, it's like these million dollar cars, like man, in our, in our business, you know, kind of, it's a reflection on our business. Right, right. Is it good enough? The response has been tremendous. I think I think there's still some love for old school, oh, yeah. <laughs> old school hot rods and big blocks. Yep. I mean, that's definitely me. And the response at SEMA has been tremendous. So, oh, yeah, very super cool. proud, super happy. Thank you for taking the time, Marty. No, thank you, really guys. You guys it. are awesome. If you guys want to learn more, head over to TurboSmartUSA.com. Follow them on all social media platforms. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so here we are at the Hot Wheels booth and if you were following our pages you would have seen that we were at their facility. A little sneak peek at what they were doing for SEMA. But even though we got the sneak peek, seeing the final products is crazy. This thing is insane. This Tesla is completely redone, not custom. And it definitely stands out. Not to mention this whole frame that they got going on here. Look at this thing. The details on it is crazy. Machines and bushes, well, steering in, great bracket, water down, wear down. 